He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Here we are on the third Sunday of Easter, this blessed Easter season. Welcome to the house of the Lord with joy. It is good to see you and welcome to those who are with us via live stream. Glad that you are with us. We have a few announcements today. Our April newsletter and sermon manuscripts are in the narthex on the kiosk. There's a sign-up sheet for a coffee hour fellowship after the worship service um, to sign up for serving. Um, our VBS is coming soon, our Vacation Bible School. And uh, to help with funds for materials and uh, to support our, the team coming up from our Bible college, there will be uh, love offerings the next two Sundays uh, that will go toward those VBS expenses. So April 25th and May 2nd, we'll have a basket in the back for VBS. VBS at Our Saviors is June 6th through 10th. And the team coming from Plymouth, from our Free Lutheran Bible College, will be out in uh, New Folden in the morning and here in the evening. Um, and I, I, that's probably the first week of a summer full of VBSs for them. So we're breaking them in right away with a, a double header. The youth group um, is continuing to meet on Wednesday nights. In one and a half weeks, please note youth and parents that uh, I think it's at the 6.30 meeting time. Instead of our regular uh, Bible study uh, youth group, we're going to have guests come. One of our guests is our own Sarah Lefebvre and one of her colleagues. I'm pointing over here. Oh, here, yeah. Sarah Lefebvre and one of her colleagues from Sanford Behavioral Health. And they will, in a week and a half, have a time with our youth group to discuss mental health challenges, mental health crises, how to uh, work through them in a healthy way, and also how to, to help uh, your friends and peers as they face mental health crises. It is not from a spiritual perspective. We're leaving that to uh, the youth group leaders and to uh, pastors and teachers. Uh, but it is still, uh, we live in bodies that God has given us, and it can be very helpful still to love our neighbors and to take care of ourselves with this kind of instruction. That's in, in a week and a half for the youth group gathering. Uh, please note in your bulletin a, a picture day coming up for the photo directory, our Jude Bible study. Uh, tomorrow we have a congregational quarterly meeting in the evening here at the church at 7.30. Please uh, clear your calendars and, and join in the congregational meeting. Uh, that means that deacons and trustees will meet at 5.30, council meets at 6.30, and the quarterly congregational meeting at 7.30. Uh, the building project is coming along. The footings have been poured, and uh, so pray for that whole project. Also, just as a continual reminder to be safe uh, and keep an eye out uh, to be safe for others as well. I would ask that you would pray for a number of dear souls uh, pray for Don Deerdahl, who is over uh, in the hospital in Fargo, and he is having a, a very difficult time. Um, this is uh, secondary complications from struggling with COVID. And so pray for his life, uh, pray for his family, um, for all who love him, uh, that God would deliver him, that God would have mercy according to his gracious will. Pray also for Linda Hornseth, who has belonged to our saviors for many years. She has now moved to Wisconsin, uh, where she can be nearer to her daughter uh, to uh, help care for her. Um, both Linda and her daughter are experiencing health difficulties. Please pray for them. And please pray for Rosemary Bergerson's daughter, Teresa, who is in the hospital uh, from this past week. We're praying for Teresa. Rosemary. There have been um, 
activities at our church this weekend, uh, one funeral already and one funeral yet today. Please pray for these grieving families. Uh, this afternoon is the funeral for Don Brown. Uh, Don and Lee were members at Our Saviors for many years. Um, over the last almost four years, I've gotten to know Don through regular visits when he was at Valley Home and then at the villa. Um, he used to drive bus when we had a bus. He, he was a janitor for a number of years, um, and now he is with the Lord. Um, pray for Pat, his daughter, for Neil, his son-in-law. Pray for all who loved Don. His funeral is today here at 1 o'clock. Yesterday, we also had a funeral. Pray for Sarah Metzel as she has lost her dad. Aaron and Sarah belong to our saviors, and her father, Merlin Almy, passed away. Um, I became a pastoral connection to Merlin, who is actually up from Bethlehem in uh, the Strathcona um, Greenbush area. And so he... Uh, his family asked that we would be involved and that I would lead the funeral. I was honored to do so. Um, pray for his widow, Elaine. Pray for his son, Andrew, and daughter, Sarah, and their families, please. The flowers on the altar today are given by the family of Lois Peterson in honor of her 97th birthday. Happy birthday, Lois. And uh, today, uh, we have a hymn before the message, and we have a hymn closing the service, but our opening uh, music is not from our hymnal. Um, there are, is an insert with a, a very short song and then two other songs. We are, um, with the direction of the deacons, uh, resuming a time of praise and worship songs at the beginning of our service one or two times a month. And so... Uh, Rejoice and, and pray for this uh, transition, um, and we, we keep in mind that there are so many styles over the ages that people have used to praise the Lord, and there's not one style that should be worshipped, but we consider the content of what we proclaim above any style in which we sing it, and so uh, we we consider Jesus Christ, we proclaim him, we praise his name, certainly. Let us now open our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship is from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 11. Absolutely beautiful. Psalm 139 is for the chief musician, a psalm of David. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me in behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us together around your holy word today. We pray that your word would do its work that you send it to do upon our hearts. As you find our hearts to be cold and, and hard hearts of stone, let your word break our hearts and turn our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh that we may receive with gladness your word. As you find our hearts broken and as you find our hearts in a puddle, we pray that your comforting gospel 
would bind us up and hold us and speak to us the peace that is ours from you on account of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to open your bulletin and sing along with the insert. Please sing with us as we open our worship service this morning. Our opening songs are printed in the insert in your bulletin. Please stand as we sing. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. Please be seated. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world they resound with god's own heart oh let the ancient words impart words of life words of hope give us strength help us cope in this world wherever we roam Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, or oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy of our faith handed down to this age come to us through sacrifice oh in the faithful words of Christ ancient words long preserved for our walk in this world they resound with God's own heart, oh let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, or oh, let the ancient words impart. Still, my soul be still, and 
do not fear. The winds of change may rage tomorrow. God is at your side. No longer dread the fires of unexpected sorrow. God, you are my God, and I will trust in you and not be shaken. Lord of peace, renew a steadfast spirit within me to rest in you alone. Still, my soul, be still. Do not be moved by lesser lights and fleeting shadows. Hold on to his ways with shield of faith against temptation's flaming arrows. God, you are my God, and I will trust in you and not be shaken. Lord of peace, renew steadfast spirit within me to rest in you alone. Still, my soul, be still. Do not forsake the truth you learned in the beginning. Wait upon the Lord, and hope will rise as stars appear when day is dimming. God, you are my God, and I will trust in you not be shaken. Lord of peace, renew a steadfast spirit within me to rest in you Praise the Lord. At this time, I would invite uh, a class of Sunday school students. Arlene's class, I believe, is going to be sharing memory work today. Is that correct? Yes. Here's Arlene. Okay. Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And the third day he arose again from the dead. And he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you so much. We have there the, the content 
of our faith expressed succinctly in the Apostles' Creed. Wonderful. We'll hear some more over coming weeks uh, from other Sunday school classes as well. This time our service continues with the confession of sin. I invite you to pray with me from the heart the prayer that you find written in the bulletin, confessing our sins to God, imploring his forgiveness through Jesus, his Son, our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake. He forgives all your sins. To them that believe on his name, he gives the power to become children of God, bestows upon them his Holy Spirit. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand as you're able in honor of the reading of God's word. Our first lesson for this third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if, this day, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Here ends our first lesson. Our gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. And, and he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy, and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Here ends our gospel lesson. There, Jesus has promised to send the Holy Spirit from the Father. And we have in that short reference a lesson about who God is. God is one. There is one God. 
but he has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so as we recite the Apostles' Creed now, just as the Sunday school class has already done for us, we consider who our God is and what he's done. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated as we hear special music now from Isaac. What reason do I have to wake up with the rising sun And not be held down by the weight of all the things I've done What reason do I have to feel this hope instead of hurt How can it be I don't receive the judgment I deserve Wave upon wave of grace upon grace endlessly washing my sins away i know the only reason i can stand here free of all my shame is wave upon wave of grace upon grace upon grace how can you see me at my worst and still say I am loved? What promise can I stand on when I don't feel good enough? When the enemy's reminding me of all that I've done wrong, what freedom do I have to feel this new creation song? Wave upon wave, of grace upon grace, endlessly washing my sins away. I know the only reason I can stand here free of all my shame is wave upon wave of grace upon grace upon grace. Singing, what can wash away my sin and make me new again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me white as snow? No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Wave upon wave. Of grace upon grace, endlessly washing my sins away. I know the only reason I can stand here free of all my shame is wave upon wave, of grace upon grace, wave upon wave. Of grace upon grace upon grace. 
What can wash away my sin and make me new again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Isaac and Wanda. I want to uh, direct your attention also to an announcement in the bulletin uh, for next Sunday afternoon. Uh, details are in there regarding a, a wedding shower, a brother blessing, if you will, for our pastoral intern, Michael Onstead, and his fiance Taylor, who will be with us virtually, I believe. Um, so uh, please see the note on that. That is an invitation for men and women alike. At this time, we will uh, sing our offertory response because we are grateful to the Lord for how he's provided our daily bread, how he gives us any th good thing we have, especially how he has given us his son, Jesus Christ. And anything we give in response to him is some of that daily bread returning back to him for furtherance of his ministry here on earth. The offering plate today is in the narthex on the table as well as the options of online giving and through the mail. Let us stand and sing together our offertory response. seated as we sing together son of god eternal savior number 490 in your hymnal and an insert in your bulletin Savior, source of life and truth and
Again, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our sermon text this morning continues in our series, I guess, from 1 John. This morning comes from 1 John chapter 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we read God's word. 1 John chapter 1 through 2, 2. Reading in Jesus' name. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life, the life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you so that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Let us pray. Father, these are your words, and we thank you for them, for they are truth. We pray that you would sanctify us in the truth, that you would use the truth of your law to convict us of sin in our lives, or that is necessary or needed. And we pray too, Lord, that you would use the truth of the gospel to comfort us and assure us and encourage us and remind us that our sins are forgiven thanks to Christ's death and resurrection for us. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, are there any 90s slash early 2000s Christian music fans in here? Or are Pastor Alex and I the only ones who start singing DC Talk's hit song, In the Light, when we read verse 7? Now, if you haven't heard that song or even heard of DC Talk at all, I encourage you after the service to go give them a listen. They're, they're, they're worth your time. But anyway, both the song and our text, at least implicitly, raise and try to answer the question, what does it mean to be in the light? The world certainly has an answer to that question, and we hear about it and read about it all the time. They tell us to accept whatever the prevailing or popular cultural ideas are at the time. However, John's answer this morning is a little different than that. John tells us that to be in the light means that we believe in the risen Lord Jesus Christ and walk as his children of light. He tells us first to believe that Jesus has brought us into the light through his death and resurrection. Then he says that we become children of light by faith in what Christ has done for us. And then finally, having been assured of our salvation and our status as children of light, we then walk in that light by daily repenting of our sins and loving and serving our neighbors. So let's, well, we begin at the end of our text, in a sense, seeing that we believe that Jesus has brought us into the into the light through his death and resurrection. At the end of our text in chapter 2, verse 2, John says that Christ is the propitiation for our sins and the sins of the entire world. Now here we see that kind of fancy theological word propitiation that tends to pop up in scripture time and time again. To propitiate, basically, it means to appease or to win the favor of someone. So as an example, say I do something wrong to Taylor, and I make her mad at me. An act of propitiation would be for me to go and apologize to her, 
and then probably bring her some of Whitman's famous chippers because she loves chippers. Now, we too, in our sin, we have done something wrong. And God is mad at that sin. In our sin, we have moved from God's light into the darkness of sin. And because of that, God is mad. Well, and he's more than mad. Because of our sin, we deserve his wrath. It's as verse 5 says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we have any sort of darkness at all, we cannot coexist with God because there's no darkness in him. He is the purest light, and darkness can't even come close to tainting or clouding that light. So on our own, without any sort of help, we are left out in the darkness, where, Jesus says so in the Gospels, that there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the darkness, only eternal destruction and suffering await us. However, God does not desire to leave us in that dark place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. In order to save us and to bring us back into the light, God sent his Son, Jesus Christ. Christ came and appeased the wrath of God on your behalf. With his death and resurrection, Christ became the propitiation for your sins, for my sins, for all of our sins, and the sins of the entire world. Christ's death appeased the wrath of God for you. His suffering on the cross was supposed to be your suffering. His death was supposed to be your death, my death. It was supposed to be you and your sin on the cross. But your sin was put on Christ when he was on the cross. So with his death, Christ appeases God's wrath against sin. And then in his resurrection, he then defeats the power of sin and death forever. The resurrection was the guaranteed promise, like we heard on Easter, that all who belong to Christ will also be raised and be children of light for all eternity. And not only is that just for us, but it's for the entire world. The entire world has now been moved from darkness back toward the light. We're, we don't see it fully yet. But Christ's death and resurrection did indeed reverse the course of the world from darkness to light. Though we see and feel our own sin and our own darkness, and we experience and see the darkness of the whole world, the resurrection has promised that all things will be restored and darkness will forever be banished by the light of God and his Son, Jesus Christ. And this was done for you, dear child of God. How does this wonderful work of Christ then become personally applied to you? How do you become a children of light, a child of light, excuse me? By faith, simply by faith. We become children of light by faith in Christ and what he has done for us. Faith is at the heart of what it means to be in the light. Faith apprehends this wonderful, gracious work of Christ and believes that that work was personal. It believes that Christ died for my sins and that his resurrection then will be my resurrection. Believes that Christ is my Lord who died and rose to save me. How do you receive that? John gives us an answer back towards the beginning of our text. John tells us in chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, that they, referring to the apostles, have testified to and are proclaiming to us what they have heard, what they have seen, what they've touched and handled, namely the word of life, that word made flesh, Jesus Christ. The apostles are proclaiming the objective and historical fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came in the flesh, they saw him, they saw him die on a cross, and they saw him rise again, all for you. Why are they proclaiming this to us? Verse 3 says that they're writing so that we may have fellowship with them. 
which in turn is fellowship with God the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. John says this another way in his gospel. He says towards the end of it that these things are written and proclaimed so that we, so that you, may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. <clears throat> Paul echoes this statement somewhat in Romans chapter 10 when he says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of Christ. The Holy Spirit works through these words of Christ, works through the words of the gospel, in order to bring us to saving faith in him. So we receive faith when we hear about it and believe who Christ is and what he has done for us. Then through that faith, we receive the forgiveness of our sins, salvation, new and eternal life, and we enter into fellowship with God and all the others who have believed throughout history, the apostles, the saints, everyone. And it is this saving faith, as I said, that is at the heart of being in the light. Walking in the light, especially as described in verse 7, consists of believing in Christ. To practice the truth is to believe in Christ and the truth of his word. To walk in darkness and to lie is to remain in unbelief and believe lies about Christ and his word. The false teachers that John warns about a little later in the, in the letter that he warns about are those walking in darkness because they do not believe the truth about Christ. However, faith is not the only part of being in the light and practicing the truth. As Pastor Alex mentioned the last week, John talks about believing and doing in this epistle. So, we've talked about what we are to believe. Now let's talk a little bit about what we are now to do. As we are assured of our salvation in Christ, we now walk in the light by daily repenting of our sins and loving and serving our neighbors. As we believe that Christ has forgiven our sin and has so firmly secured our salvation for us, we're then commanded to do good works. This is the second part of being or walking in the light. We're commanded to love our neighbor and to walk in the good works that God has prepared for us to do beforehand, as the book of Ephesians tells us. How and where do we do these good works that God has prepared for us? In our, and you probably know what the next word is going to be if you know me, vocations. Parents, you walk in the light as you pray for, love, and care for your child, and you raise them in the faith. Children, you walk in the light as you pray for your parents and listen to them by perhaps doing your chores, getting your schoolwork done, etc. Students, you walk in the light as you prayerfully and diligently study and do your schoolwork to the best of your ability. Spouses, you walk in the light as you love your spouse by praying for them, sacrificing for them, doing, perhaps doing little things around the house for them, buying them their favorite snacks like chippers or something else, and other such examples. As a congregation, you walk in the light as you come to church and you receive the ministry of the word. And also when you have fellowship with your fellow neighbors and you go and chat with them, perhaps at coffee after the service, or you go and visit them at their house and you chat with them and pray for them, pray with them, what have you. In society, you walk in the light as you pray for your neighbors, as you do your work diligently at your job, as you pray for your coworkers as well, as you perhaps do acts of charity and kindness for your coworkers or actual neighbors in your neighborhood, and the list of examples goes on and on. Now, those works flow out of our faith. They flow out of our confession and our belief that Christ has forgiven our sins, and won eternal life for us. Those good works do not do anything to cancel out your sin debt, for only Christ's death has done that. So as we go out and we do our good works in our vocations, we may still find ourselves seeing our own sin. In fact, I would expect us to still see our own sin. 
We may not always want to go out and do the good works that we're supposed to do. We may want to go do something else or not do the good works at all, maybe just stay at home and not do anything. We may still wrestle against sins that we so desperately want to be rid of, but still end up keep doing. Seeing those sins and repenting of them is also a part of walking in the light. It's one of those places that I think uniquely where faith and good works especially intersect, that we can really see it play out. As verses 8 and 10 say, if we don't have sin, or if we say that we don't have sin, or that we just don't sin at all, we're deceiving ourselves. Not only are we deceiving ourselves, verse 10 adds that we're making God a liar when we say such things. So if we tell ourselves that we're, oh, we're not that bad, or, well, I'm better than so-and-so, or perhaps even thinking, well, maybe we're inherently good, then we're calling God a liar, and as such, removing the need for Christ to die on the cross for us. Thankfully, Christ has certainly set us free from our slavery to sin, and he has declared us righteous and forgiven. Praise the Lord. However, while we're still on this side of heaven, while we're still on this side of eternity, our sinful flesh, it still tries to act out its desires, despite our not wanting to. Thankfully, Christ has forgiven those daily sins as well. Chapter 2, verse 1, as well as verses 8 and 9, all say that for anyone who does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. That advocate is Jesus, who, as verse 8 says, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Jesus Christ, the righteous one, stands daily at the Father's right hand to advocate for you. Though the devil tries to accuse you and say that you're not a real Christian or a good Christian because you can't stop doing this sin or that sin no matter how many times you repent, Christ says to the Father, I have died for them. He or she is my beloved child. I have paid the penalty for their sin. They are forgiven and they are mine. And so we experience a cycle of sorts that I mentioned you know, way back at the beginning of my internship that also feels forever ago and not so very forever ago. We believe that Christ has died for us and he's rose for us and that encourages us and assures us by that immutable fact of history that he died and rose for you. So then out of our assurance of faith, out of our assurance of salvation, we go out and we love our neighbors according to the Ten Commandments in our vocations. But then as we kind of like go on and we come to the end of the day, we reflect back on our day, we find that we didn't do all that we should have done, so we repent and we turn to the, return to the cross. Thus we have this kind of cycle of daily repentance and of daily walking in the light. So to conclude... John encourages us to believe in the risen Lord Jesus Christ and to walk as his children of light. He tells us to believe that Jesus has brought us into the light through his death and resurrection. He tells us as well that we become children of light by faith in that objective fact, objective history that Christ has won for us. And then finally, having been assured of our salvation and our status as children of light, we are to walk in that light through daily repentance of our sins and daily loving and serving our neighbors. John gives us scripture's answer to the question, what does it mean to be in the light? Now, spoiler alert before you go listen to DC Talk. Their song talks about the desire to be in the light. And then scripture gives the answer. It gives the fulfillment to that desire. DC Talk sings of wanting to be in the light. And John answers what it looks like. It looks like believing that Christ is the Son of God who has come in the flesh and died and rose for the forgiveness of your sins. It looks like loving your neighbor in your vocation, daily repenting and believing in Christ again as you fail to do so perfectly. Believing and doing. This is what it means to walk in the, as a, to walk in the light. So as you daily walk in the light of Christ, 
May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to turn in your bulletin inserts and hymnals to hymn number 97, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Hymn number, hymn number 97 in the hymnal and in your bulletin insert. prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the light that you have shown to us, the light of Christ, the Word made flesh, come to die and rise for us. We pray that you would help us to walk in the light as you are in the light. Help us to daily believe that Christ has died and rose for us, and pray that you would give us the encouragement and the motivation to go and to love and serve our neighbor in the, all the various ways we can in our vocations. We pray that you would also forgive us and, as we fail to do so perfectly. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to keep us in the light, for that is where we want to be, and we thank you so much for it. We pray that you would be with those who are mourning and suffering and are in need of prayer, from our congregation, we think of Don and the Almi and Metzl families and the Brown, Don Brown's family. Pray that you would be near to them and comfort them as they grieve. Pray that you would be with Linda and her daughter, with Deborah's father in Brazil. Pray for missionary John and Hannah Lee's family as they are in Brazil as well. Pray for Lois and Chuck and Wanda, Sarah, Dana, Bev. Ruby, Jordan, Nancy, Irene, Jan, Lenore, Rose, Carol, Ed, Gordon, and our servicemen and women tied both directly to the congregation and the armed forces abroad. 
We pray for our country, Lord, pray for all of our elected and appointed officials from President Biden all the way down to our local, our local polices and mayors and city councils and the like. Pray that you would grant them wisdom and repentance where that may be needed um, so that they might lead us well, lead us wisely, so that good may be protected against evil. Pray, too, for the unsaved, both in this country and abroad. We pray for our missionary families in the AFLC, thinking of John and Anna Lee and all of the others. We pray that the Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would use us as your workers in this harvest field. We pray that you would rise up more workers for the harvest to be pastors and missionaries and leaders in the congregation. We pray that as we bring the message of the gospel, as we bring the light of the gospel forth, we pray that people would not harden their hearts and reject the message, but Lord, that you would work in their hearts to soften their hearts and bring them to repentance and saving faith in you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Praying the, and now let us pray the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able, and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Lord is with you. Amen.